Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, so today we will uh, discuss about uh, postgres uh, SQL alchemy, basically, how we can uh, restore the dumped data into the postgres database, and then uh, using SQL, I mean uh, SQL alchemy, uh, how can we uh, bring our data to uh, Panda data frame. That that will be the whole objective of uh, this tutorial. Uh, whenever you have a question, please raise your hand or open your mic and speak up. Uh, let me just share my screen. Hello, can you hear me? Is my screen visible? I, I, I don't know what's happening. Right, it's coming. All right, uh, so we have uh, data given, the uh, telecom.sql data, that, that's what we need to uh, load to Postgres, right? Let me just uh, start this one. Uh, first, we need to install Postgres, right? If you are uh, a Linux user, it's simply uh, pip install Postgres. Uh, for those uh, we have to check that. Uh, so here we have and later it will open the, the database. Uh, to connect, you have to put your uh, password. Here the user is Postgres and the server is the database. So, Postgres, so I will give my password. Uh, oh, sorry. Trend password. So this, this is the database. If you go to the schema, uh, the place where the, the team should be created, and there is a public schema, and there are tables. Uh, oh, already I load that already, so let me delete. So, if you want to dump data, the script is not showing. Sorry? We are not seeing your screen. My? Your, your uh, screen is not visible. Maybe it's the network. Yeah, I think it's a network, and uh, your voice is also breaking up. Uh, I think it's a network, sorry. Is it visible now? No. Hello? No, no. Let me stop in duration.
Okay, can you see my screen now? All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, we want to uh, a telecom data to the one line. Uh, we will say if it's installed, uh, this will sh this should work perfectly, right? Uh, you you should specify the local host. Uh, that that that's the host in general. In 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 our case, it's a local host, and the database is Postgres, and the user is Postgres, right? If your database is different, you have to give a database name and then also the username. And then minus F and you specify the um, the file name, right? So this shouldn't work because I'm in my home directory, but the, the uh, file is in a different directory. So what I will do is, um, I will be in the same way. As far as you give a little of a little bit of minus h a host uh minus t that's the database the username uh and the file name right as i should so i do this uh, and then you, you have to put your password for the database um you see it the, the 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 dump file has uh, what we call it secret that, uh, will be given uh, etc. So this is done. So when you come, uh, if you uh, you will get the x data and view.
Sorry, guys. The the network killing me. Uh, Hello, am I audible? What's going on? Your voice is breaking up. Oh, it's definitely the network. How about now? All right, where, where did I stop? Can someone tell me? You execute nope. the command. Uh, on the command? Yeah. Yeah, on the first oh. part. Oh, okay. Um, you mean this one, right? Yes. All right. Yes. So, all right. So our our goal is to load the data uh, from the uh, local directory or from the dumped SQL file to the Postgres database, right? So what we'll do is uh, PSQL minus H, and we put the 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 host, which is local host or 1.1 uh, to 7.00.1 uh, and the, the database name, that's Postgres, and the user, that's Postgres, and the, the file name, that's Telcom SQL. I am in the same folder as the, the Telcom uh, data. Uh, if you are in a different uh, location, you have to give the relative lo or the absolute location for that file so when 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 we run this or when we execute this uh, it will dump uh, the post grace uh, this data let me do so that you can see it Right. So if I please again, okay, uh, I put my password for the database and then Uh, let me show you the Uh, you can you can try that uh, on your terminal so is, is it clear how to dump the data uh, from your sql dump to postgres all right uh, now the next step is to read the data from the database to your uh, Python code or to your uh, Jupyter notebook, right? So let me open this one. Um, uh, here we need to install uh, PsychoPG 
to or p cycle pg to binary sometimes uh, the the p cycle pg2 might not work so you you might need to install uh, p cycle pg2 binary hyphen binary um yeah so uh, we need to install uh, sql alchemy i already installed that uh, you simply say pip install sql alchemy uh, it's already installed uh, the same thing pip3 install uh, p p psychology uh, p psychology g2 it's already installed uh, you also need to install the dot env uh, because uh, we are going to use some environment variables to hide the uh, for example the password the database name etc and for that you need to install uh, pip3 install uh, python in this case python.env python.env uh, i already installed that uh, you need to install panda right um, so we can load the data to um, a panda data frame into different ways uh, first what we will do is we load our environment variables which means you need to create a dot env file this dot env file will uh, contain the uh, username the password the host the post i mean the port and the, the database right in my case the database is postgres uh, port is 5432 uh, host local host and the password and the username uh, username in my case is uh, postgres so this is how you set it up right the this can be anything these are just variables pg host local host pg port etc so we uh, back here saying that user equals or s um, environ uh, pg user this is defined inside the dot env file right so that will uh, load the local variables um yeah that's because i didn't run this one i hope i'm not disconnected good all right uh so the first thing we need to do is we need to connect to the database right uh as i said earlier let me close this one we can do it in two ways uh, so to connect to the database uh, we need to create uh, a connection using uh, pcycle pg2 right uh, this is just a try and accept if something fails uh, we want to exit right so how do we connect it uh, we say uh, pcycle pg2 dot connect and then host we pass the host this is already defined above loaded from the uh, environment variable and the database the username and the password so once you have the connection then you can uh, write a query uh, to that database and get the data that's the whole idea if something fails we we stop otherwise uh, the connection is successful so you can define the, the connection in this way or you don't have to you just need this connection once we do that uh, we can uh, get the data frame, uh, the, the, the SQL to a data frame, right? So we, we say cursor is equals to con.cursor. Our connection and this, this function is takes the connection and the query. The connection is this function, right? Here, find my connection. Here, I'm calling the above function called connect right so you pass the connection in the query uh, so you execute the the uh, cursor with the query if something uh, fails you return an error otherwise you fetch all the data 
this is how you fetch it, right? So this will contain all the data, uh, but it doesn't include the columns. Since it will not contain the columns, what we do is when we create the uh, data frame, uh, we pass the, the list, the, the fetched data, and the columns will be uh, obtained from the description, the description. So call zero for call in, 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 in the description, the first uh, item is the column name. So we say call zero for call in cursor.description. And then once you get the data, you have to close the connection uh, in, in, in the database, I mean the cursor, later the, the connection. So this will return the, the data frame, right? So how can we uh, get the data having these two functions? The first, we need to write a query, right? So the query is, uh, it should be in triple quote, triple single or double quote, and an SQL query. It's, it's simply a, a, an SQL query. So select everything from, where is our data? It's in public dot XDR data. Uh, if you remember, right, this is the uh, public key inside this database, right? This database, that's the database. We have the connection. We, we put a schema, that's public, public dot the, the table name, which is XDR underscore. Uh, data underscore data. So that's our query. And we, we, we open connection by calling this function, right? And then we pass these two, the connection and the query to the above function again, and then it will return the Panda data frame. So if we run this, uh, it's connecting all good connection successful. That means uh this one right if something fails uh, either you will stop here or here right so everything seems working now you can check the, the data that's def.head right so we successfully bring the data from uh postgres to uh, a, a panda data frame a panda data frame this is one way we, we didn't sequence like it. We use uh, Panda and uh, PCYCLE PG2. Uh, are there any questions? Is it clear? Hello? Am I audible? All right, uh, please ask, don't be quiet. Can someone open his mic and speak up? Yes, yeah. can, you, yeah. can you repeat the command? He, it is showing me an error here on my piece. Uh, what, what was the error? Uh, the command. I already. The, the what? The command is not called PSQL. I am, which means you didn't install the, uh, the uh, Postgres. That, that's what it means. This is the command. You can check it in the, uh, I already sent it in the chat box. In the message, uh, I have sent the, the command. The, the, the problem, you have to be careful about the uh, database and the username. Where you, when you run that, you will be asked to enter a password for the database. Okay. Uh, so it, it should be consistent. If, if it's not Postgres, Postgres, you, you, you have to give the a database name and the username. Is that clear? Yes, uh, let me try it. Uh, any other question? All right. 
Uh, so the next one is uh, sequel alchemy. Uh, su sequel alchemy is uh, a Python uh, SQL toolkit. That means it will uh, allow us to write SQL queries using Python. That that's uh, the whole uh, sequel alchemy. It's um, a relational object mapper that map objects from SQL to uh, a Python. That that. That's what SQL alchemy is. Uh, almost the, the the approach is similar, uh, but uh, we will we will use different um, functions. So if you remember or if you see here from SQL alchemy, we import create engine. We first create an engine and then we use that engine to connect to uh, the Postgres database, right? So here. First, we, we put a, a URI, uh, or it's like a URL for the database. Uh, this is an F string, right? Because I want to use the environment variables inside the string. Uh, so you say Postgres plus PCYCO uh, PG2. This is the driver. Without this one, it, it might not work. For some, uh, maybe in, in Windows, you might not need a uh, PCYCO PG2. Uh, you simply say Postgres colon forward slash forward slash, and then the username, right? Uh, the username for the database, and then the password, add, right? And the host, that, that would be the, the local host, and the port, the port number is 5432, and forward slash the database name, the database name. Once we have this URI, uh, we can create uh, an engine. So we try uh, alchem engine equals create uh, engine. We pass the URI. If something goes bad, we 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 exit, right? Otherwise, the engine uh, we print engine created, right? So once we have that using the engine, we can connect to uh, the Postgres server, right? So DB connection is alchem engine, which is this one. Uh, and we connect, right? Once we connect, uh, what we'll do is we will write uh, our query and uh, using the, the connection, we can read SQL uh, directly to Panda, right? So this function takes a query that we will write uh, next. And then using this database, uh, connection, we can read from uh, SQL. So PD Panda dot read SQL query and a database connection. Once we get the data, we have to close the connection. This is a, a, a best practices. You have to close the connection and then we return the data frame. So if I run this, uh, and this is again my query, I want to get everything from uh, that table in the public schema xdr underscore data that's my query right so my data frame will be data from postgres by passing the query uh, uh, you can actually take out this one and pass it as an argument um, yeah, it depends on the on your design thinking so we create the query and then we say data from uh, Postgres. Now it's done. We can check the heat. So this is the, the data. So we can get the data um, in two ways, using a SQL alchemy or uh, simply using PCI copy G2 and uh, basically data frame. Is it clear how to get uh, a data from uh, Postgres? Anyone? No question? Yeah, yeah, I will, I will, I will share the a file. You will, you will find it on Google Drive.
right. Uh, this is basically what you need. Once you have the data, then uh, you need to use it. Okay. Am I audible? Hello? Okay. Um, yes. uh, once you have data, then you go for transformation, uh, and then you start the analysis, right? So basically, we, you're working on the uh, data. I think we're asking about uh, Docker. So uh, I have tried a simple application, a flash application. You don't have to understand it, but you need to understand how Docker uh, kind of works. So let me just, uh, this one, this is a Flask app for a crowd operation. Uh, create, retrieve,
¿Al cuarto o no? Te? Hello. Ah, oh, I think uh, ya ya me acuerdo tú no la voy a hacer. Ah, te acuerdo. Slack la voy a entender. Esta es afuera, tú ves Slack la. ¿Quién va a decir a ti al bilano Slack la? I am I audible? Hello? Yes, you are. Sorry. Um where did I stop? Where did at the beginning of uh, dockerization? You were just starting. And so where was the docker file oh yes yes the docker file Uh, you were saying I, I haven't started the dockerization. Hello? Yes, uh, you are just starting. You were just starting. Okay. Okay, let me, let me start to work. Um, so, um, I really don't know the reason why. Uh, okay, let me start over. Am, am I audible? Okay. Uh, so here I, I, I created a simple Flask app. Uh, you, you don't need to understand everything here. It's just an application that uh, will create a user database uh, and we do some CRUD operations like create, um, create user, uh, get user, um, update user, and delete user, right? And we are going to use Postgres database 
and then we want to containerize uh, this application. And to do that, uh, the, the, the first thing we need to do is we need to write the requirements. Uh, in, in this app, we, we need a Flask PCICO PG2 binary and Flask SQL uh, Once we do that, for example, if we want to run this locally, uh, we first need to install the requirements, right? So we will say pip install uh, minus r requirements that will install these uh, dependencies for the application to run, right? Uh, so we we are not going to do that. Rather, we will uh, Docker to uh, to to do that. For that, we need to write uh, we need to write a Docker file, uh, and it, it 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 depends on the application uh, you are creating or developing, and this file will be uh, different, right? It's just a step by step execution of the app, right? In this case, from we say from Python, and then uh, the Python version, like 3.12 or 3.11, the Slim Buster, or 3.8, it depends. And then we set the working directory. Uh, in this case, I call it app, right? And then we copy this requirement file into the app. Uh, that's here, that means in the uh, working directory and then we install them, right? That's what we do when we are running it locally. And then this means copy everything here and then expose the port 4000 for the application, uh, for the Flask application. And we specify the commands that we will be using, uh, that Docker will be using basically, which means Flask run and then the host and then the port, uh, you, we, we might add many more. Uh, it depends. For for this app, we only need uh, to run the Flask app. So these are what we uh, specify, right? Once we have this, the next step is uh, to set the services for the app, right? So these services, right? Uh, the first is the our Flask app, and for the Flask app, we give it a container name, right? This can be anything. It's a Docker Flask app. That's the container name, and the image you can call it wherever you want. Uh, I say EIA Flask app, and then you put a version number, etc. And build here. That means in the app directory, and then the ports. That's four thousand, four thousand, and then the environment variable. If you remember uh, here, since we are going to use the Postgres database using SQL Alchemy, here we define uh, a DB URL. This is an environment variable, right? In uh, environ.get this from the environment. So this will be uh, defined here in the uh, Docker Compose, which is Postgres SQL, uh, Sometimes you may need to add, as I said, PSYCO PG2. Uh, sometimes you don't, it depends. Uh, so you pass the username and the uh, password and add a Flask DB. You see, this is the database. And this is depend. this has to be defined. The only thing that we don't know here is this, right? and the, the port number, and then the, the database, right? Uh, no, that, yeah. So we need to define this uh, dependency. So this everything depends on a Flask DB. That's the Flask database. You can call it whatever you want. So we define the, the a Flask database by giving a container name just we did for the a flask app right and then the image uh, the image will be postgres and then the version number we want to use postgres uh, 14 it might be 12 it might be 16 i think currently it's 16 
and then you uh, specify the port the port for the postgres database uh, it's 5432 and then you set the environment variables the environment variables are uh, the password the user postgres password postgres user postgres database i put everything to be postgres right and then the volume uh pg data this when you install it, it it will be in this directory so you have to specify that volume right var leave postgres sql uh a db and we will have uh, mpt volumes so this is how you specify or containerize um your application i know it's a lot to take to take in but in time you will you will understand it now let, let's just test it if it works right so the first thing i need to do is am i still audible yeah okay uh um i'm really sorry uh, i think we, we we finished the the dockerization uh, you just need to run it right i think that's where i stopped uh let me just uh, run it if possible all right uh as i said when you say docker paste minus l uh, you will have the in your case it will not be there right once we do that uh, we will we will have to say uh, we have to build it and then uh, compose since i already uh, built it so i will say uh, docker uh, compose up uh, build the flask up And I will pass my passphrase. Oh, I'm audible. For, for the first time, it takes time, and also it it's very slow. Um, yeah. So uh, it's saying that error starting user proxy failed connectivity flask db already in use okay uh i think i have to stop the docker compose stop hmm? uh 
Sorry, how did I stop it? Uh, isn't it Docker Compose top? Uh, okay. Sudo C service. Yeah. Let's just stop the Postgres server. Um, yeah. So you have to stop the Postgres. Uh, and then this will be fine, I think. Okay, now it's running on this port uh, to check since we didn't create um, a UI user interface, we can use uh, Postman for requesting and posting uh, to the API that we created. Uh, for example, here to create a user uh, delete view, etc. For that, we use uh, an a postman. Yeah. Uh, the first one you can you can test it using uh, test. Um, I believe that that's it. So if I want to get what I have, and if I send, as you can see, it's empty. There is nothing there, right? So there's no uh, data at all. So we can create a user by passing uh, um, a username and an email address since the ID is uh, by default auto-generated. So I will say this to be a post, that means we are going to uh, data to the database, right? If I, if you go to Postgres, uh, there is no uh, table for users. Mm -mm. Schema, uh, tables, um, you see it's created, but it doesn't have any. It doesn't have any data, right? So we can send a data uh, using like this one right so we specify the username and the password right here there is no data here so if i send say send uh you can see now user is created and if we refresh this we will have the uh, data mm. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, email. So this is how you containerize uh, your Docker or your application, I mean. Are there any questions? I will I will attach the, the files and you have to practice and read about it more. I know it's complicated. Any questions, any comments? Is it clear? Guys, please say something. Ask questions. Uh, 
Hello? Anyone? Hello, yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Mm. Come, go on, Abraham. Okay. So far, uh, it's it's uh, it's good for me. Uh, but uh, let us try it uh, on our uh, motion, and uh, maybe we can uh, we can discuss the issues uh, arise on uh, on Slack. Yeah. Sure. Daniel. Okay. Thank you. Uh, does the stream like support uh, Docker? Yeah, you can continuize your uh, stream lit up uh, using Docker. Yes. So we can host uh, the Docker file to the stream light, right? Yeah. No, you you can Dockerize your stream lit up uh, in the Docker, and then you can host it, um, for example, in uh, Heroku. Uh, or any hosting platform. Okay. Any other question? If it's clear, uh, maybe, I don't know. You, you guys need to speak up, please. Okay, give me some reaction if it's clear. Okay, Abraham, thank you. Yeah, Abstra, okay. All right, uh, so yeah, uh, let's stop the recording here. Um, I hope you will manage the submission for tonight.